All right, so going through this review sheet. Um, so in the first problem that we have right here, when we are simplifying, um, remember that to be able to multiply uh, two radicals together, all that has to happen is for them to be the same root. So these are both square roots, which means I can go ahead and multiply them together. 14 times 2 gets me to 28. Y to the fifth times Y, again, when I am multiplying uh, letters together, Ys or whatever it is, um, I'm basically counting how many Ys I have here. I have five here and one here. So altogether, I've got six. Once I'm here now to simplify what I have, I'm going to split the 28 up into a 4 and a 7 because 4 is the biggest perfect square that divides 28 evenly. And then y to the 6th, I can just keep together because our rule with variables with exponents is that I can just take the exponent and divide it by the root. And that's how I end up taking the square root or the cube root or whatever it is. So once I'm here, again, the things that I've highlighted are the two things that are perfect squares that I can take the square root of. So the square root of 4 gives me 2. The square root of y to the 6th, again, 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. The thing that is not a perfect square that I didn't highlight stays underneath the radical sign. With the second one, same thing. Um, I'm going to split the 175 up into 25 and 7, the biggest square root that divides it evenly. And here I have to split my x up. So here, I'm going to split this x to the 7th up. Um, you always want to get the biggest perfect square. So start with 7, go down by 1. So I could split it up into a 6 and a 1. Because that um, once I do that, then I'll realize I can take the square root of x to the 6th. So these are my perfect squares. And then the 7 and the x stay in the radical because they're not perfect squares. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of x to the 6th is x to the 3rd. Because again, the exponent divided by the root gives me um, the exponent that's left outside of the radical. Here, uh, taking cube root here, both of these I'm actually able to take the cube root of. Uh, remember that when I have an odd root, I can take the root of negative numbers. So this negative 125, I take the cube root of it, um, and it becomes a negative 5. And then the x to the 12th, again, the exponent divided by the root gives me when I take the cube root. So x to the 12th, the cube root of it is x to the 4th. And the same thing with this last one right here. I'm splitting up this 135 into 27 and 5 because 27 is the biggest cubed root that uh, divides it evenly. And then this x to the 5th, again, I'm going to start by going down 1. If I separated it into 4 and 1, Neither of those are divisible by 3, my root. So then I go down and split it up into a 3 and a 2 because 3 is divisible by 3. It's a perfect cube I can take. And then the x squared. Again, uh, cube root of 27 gives me 3. Cube root of x to the third gives me just x. And then these two terms, or these two things, I should say, uh, will stay underneath the, the cube root sign. With the next row of problems, adding or subtracting, the rule with adding or subtracting is the root has to be the same, and then also what's underneath the radical has to be the same as well. So there's two different things that have to happen for me to be able to add or subtract radicals together. The same root and the same thing under the radical. So when that happens, the stuff under the radical and the root stay the same. That doesn't change at all. And then all I do is I just combine my coefficients together, the 5 and the negative 12. So that's how I got the negative 7 there. Number six, you cannot combine because they are both square roots, but this is a three under the radical, this is a five under the radical, so they can't combine together. It just stays just like this, seven radical three plus seven radical five. Uh, with seven and eight, um, initially it looks like you can't do it just like six, but what I can do is I can simplify the radicals first and then see if what is left under the radical sign is the same number, which ends up happening here. So I'm going to split this 45 up into 9 and 5, because 9 is the biggest perfect square that divides it. I'll split the 125 up as 25 and 5. Now this is a little, a little tricky. Again, I'm working down my page as I do this, so I'm keeping my plus sign right here all the way through. And then the biggest thing to remember is that this 5 stays out in front, the square root of 9 gives me 3, and then remembering that these multiply together because uh, this 5 is multiplying by the square root of 45. It's 
all multiplied here, then plus and these are multiplied together. So how I got this 15 was 5 times 3, and then the radical 5 stays a radical 5. Here, same thing, the square root of 25 is 5, 3 times 5 gives me 15, radical 5. And then, so now that they are the same number under the radical, then I can combine my coefficients together, the 15s together, to get a 30. And the same thing with 8. Split up the 40 as 8 and 5, the biggest cube root that divides 40 evenly. And then same thing here, 125 and 5. So when I do this, again, the 3 out in front times the 2, which the cube root of 8 is 2, gives me 6. And then here, 2 times the cube root of 125 is 5, gives me that 10 right there. Um, now they're the same, they're both cube roots, they are both fives, so I can go ahead and combine together those uh, coefficients, the six and the negative ten gets me to negative four. Uh, down here with number nine, um, these are ones that I'm going to FOIL multiply, so I'm going to three times five gives me fifteen, three times negative radical three gives me negative three radical three, negative radical three times five gives me negative five radical three, and negative, th or sorry, negative radical 3 times negative radical 3 gives me a positive radical 9. This turns into a 3. The square root of 9 gives me 3. So I can combine these together to get 18. And these together, since they're both... Whoopsie daisy. There we go. Since these are both radical 3s, I can combine them together to get a negative 8. Um, here with number 10... Um, there's a shortcut, or I could write this out as 3 plus radical 5 times 3 plus radical 5. The shortcut to doing this is I can square my first term to get 9. I can square my second term to get a radical 25, which ends up turning into a 5. And then I can multiply these two terms together and then double it. So 3 times radical 5 gives me 3 radical 5, and then double it or multiply it by 2... 3 radical 5 times 2 turns into 6 radical 5. Um, remember that when I do like 3 radical 5 times 2, I'm just multiplying the whole numbers by each other and the radicals by each other. Um, so that's how I got the 6 there. Then I can combine these like terms together, the 9 and the 5, to get this 14 right here. Um, here, number 11, we should be able to recognize that these are conjugates of each other. Um, so they are the same two terms, just one is a minus sign and one is a plus sign. So again, when that happens, the middle two terms will cancel each other out. So instead of having to multiply everything out, the shortcut is I can multiply the first two terms by, or sorry, the first terms by each other and the last two terms by each other. So 5 times 5 gives me 25. Negative radical 3 times radical 3 gives me negative radical 9. Square root of 9 is 3, so 25 minus 3 gives me 22. And then the last one here, two radical, or sorry, two times five gives me ten. Two times two radical two. Again, it's two times two, which gives me four. And then the radical two is thrown on to the end. Negative four radical two times five. Negative four times five gives me negative twenty. The radical two is thrown on to the end. And then here, negative four radical two times two radical two. Negative four times two gives me negative eight. Radical two times radical two gives me radical four. Square root of four. Square root of 4 gives me 2, and so I combine the 2, or sorry, the 8 times 2 gives me 16, um, and then I can combine the middle 2 together because they're both radical 2, square root of 2s. So that's how I got negative 16 there, and then combine together the 10 and the negative 16, which gives me the negative 6 right there. Uh, last row, row, row of problems here. Um, when I see these both are to the 1 half power, I can recognize that that is the same thing as the square root of 3 and the square root of 80. And that is something that I can multiply since they are both the same radical. Um, what I can do then is multiply these by each other, which gives me square root of 240. Find the biggest perfect square that divides 240, which is 16, 16 and 15. And then know that this is the perfect square, so 16 turns into a regular 4. 15 stays under the radical. Uh, the last three problems on the front side are all dealing with, uh, like, exponential rules. So, again, with these, whenever I have parentheses in all three of these problems, when I have an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, this exponent is shared between all the things on the inside. So here, this a to the one-fourth power is going to the negative fifth, and the b to the negative two-thirds is also going to the negative fifth. So... When I'm taking an exponent to another exponent, I multiply the exponents together. 
This is 1 fourth times negative 5 gives me negative 5 fourths. Negative 2 thirds to the negative 5, I multiply them together and get positive 10 thirds. Here, I never want to leave an answer with a negative exponent. So from here, this a with the negative exponent should go down into the denominator just like this problem. So that's my final answer right there. The tricky thing about 15 is that sometimes we don't realize that the 8 and the x are separate things. So with this 1 third power, 8 has to go to the 1 third power, and x to the 7th has to go to the 1 third power, which I show in this step right here, going to both. So it is 8 to the 1 third power, and then again, exponent to another exponent multiplies together to get 7 thirds, 27 to the 1 third power, and then y to the 5 thirds, because I'm multiplying those together as well. Uh, once I'm here, um, I can do these calculations. I can type them into my calculator to double check. Um, 8 to the 1 thirds power simplifies to 2. 27 to the 1 third power gives me 3. Um, no negative exponents, so I just leave it like that as my final answer. Um, and then um, this last one right here, same thing with tops and bottoms. Everything gets this uh, negative 3 fourths power. So I'll, I think the easiest way to work is to take everything to the exponent first. So 2 to the negative 3 fourths gives me negative 3 halves. Negative 7 to the 3 fourths gives me 21 fourths. And uh, z to the fifth to the negative 3 fourths power gives me negative 15 to the uh, fourths. The trick to this one, and this is something that sometimes messes us up, is if I have a negative exponent on the bottom of my fraction, all it does is just move it to the top. Um, just like tops move to bottoms, bottoms move to tops. That's the way of like getting rid of negative exponents. So when I do that, I get what I have right here. Y and Z are positive exponents on the top, and X is a positive exponent on the bottom. On the back then here, um, the easiest way to do 17 and 18 is to put uh, the whole fraction under one big radical sign. And then when I do that, when I simplify, 112 divided by 7 gives me 16. X to the 10th divided by X squared gives me X to the 8th. Remember, when you're dividing X's, you subtract your exponents to get the 8. And then here, this is a tricky one, this Y's right here. When Y to the 3rd means I have 3 Y's up here, and I have 7 Y's on the bottom. So instead of having to subtract and then move, what I can also recognize is that there are four more y's on the bottom than there are on the top. So when I divide these by each other, I'll be left with four more y's, and they will be on the bottom since that's where more y's are. Once I'm here, everything I can take the fourth root of, so the fourth root of 16 is 2. The fourth root of x to the eighth, remember I divide these guys by each other, which gives me x squared. And then the y to the fourth, fourth root of that gives me just a y. And then the same thing happens with 18. Put it all under one big radical. Divide, I get 12, I get x to the fifth, I get y to the fourth by subtracting my exponents. I can split up the 12 into 4 and 3, turns into a 2, turn, 3 stays underneath. I can split up the x to the fifth into x to the fourth and x to the first, which take the square root, gets x squared, and the y to the fourth turns into a y squared. <laughs> And then the last ones here, um, rationalizing the denominator. When I have a single term like in 19 and 21, the easiest way for me to rationalize the denominator is multiply the top and the bottom by the bottom. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by radical 3xy. When I do that on the bottom, the trick to it is basically I'm squaring the bottom, which will just end up giving me 3xy. Um, you can show it in two steps if you wanted to get 9 uh, x squared, y squared, but when I would take the square root of that, I'd end up with 3xy. On the top, multiply the numbers by each other to get the 15. x, there's no match with it, so it just stays an x. y squared times y gives me y to the third. Uh, once I'm there, I can go ahead and simplify. Uh, I can split the y up into a y squared and a y. Um, the square root of y gives me y. Then this, the things that are not square roots will stay underneath the square root sign with a 3xy on the bottom. The y on the top and the y on the bottom cancel out to give me a final answer, just like I have right here. And remember, this x right here is under the radical. That's why I can't cross it off with the x in the denominator. Uh, with one like 20, when I have two terms on the bottom, I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate, which is the same thing as the bottom, just with a plus sign instead of a minus sign, or vice versa if it was the other way. <clears throat> So on the top, I'll FOIL multiply. 4 times 3 gives me 12. 4 times radical 3 gives me 4 radical 3. 
three or sorry, radical three times three gives me three radical three, and radical three times radical three gives me radical nine squared and nine, which turns into a three, combines with a twelve to get me fifteen. These combine together to get me seven radical three. On the bottom, remember conjugates, my shortcut, multiply the first by each other to get nine, and the last by each other to get minus radical nine. Square root of nine gives me three, and so I end up with getting a six on the bottom. None of these reduce, so I'm done right there. Uh, 21 is kind of the same thing uh, as number 9. Multiply the top and the bottom by the bottom by radical 2xz. So when I do that, um, on the bottom I'll get 2xz. On the top I'll get 20 by multiplying the numbers. x to the 4th, y to the 5th, and then I've got this extra z there as well. I can split up the 20 as a radical 4 and radical 5, which turns into a 2. A 5 stays under. x to the 4th is x squared. I can split up the y to the 5th into y to the 4th and y. It gives me y squared and y, and this z just stays underneath. Once I've done that, the 2's cross off. One of the 2's on the top cancels out with the bottom, leaving me with x, y squared, radical 5, y, z, with a z by itself on the bottom. And then the last three here, um, solving equations. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my radical by itself, the square root by itself. So, so I do that by subtracting the 10 to the other side. Square both sides to get rid of the square root side on the left-hand side, to get 9 on the right-hand side. And then solve by uh, adding the 1 and dividing by 10. Here, I'm going to add the 4 to the other side. Square both sides. Remember when I do this. I've got to actually FOIL multiply x plus 4 squared. I can't just share the 2 between both of them because there's a plus sign in between rather than on the front when you had multiplication in between, I could share it. Okay. So here, my shortcut to squaring a binomial is square the first term, square the last term, and then in here, multiply these together and double it. 4 times x gives me 4x. Multiply that by 2 and I get 8x. Um, once I'm here, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. When I do that, I get this trinomial. I can factor it, two numbers that multiply to get me 6, positive 6, add to give me positive 5, or positive 3 and positive 2. When I do that, I can then get solutions of negative 3 and negative 2. Again, it's the opposite are my solutions. And then when I plug these in to find my extraneous solutions, plug in the negative 3 here and here, I get them both to work negative 3 and negative 2. And then the last one here, um, I'm going to get the parentheses of the fractional exponent by itself first. I'm going to subtract the 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And then I'm going to take both uh, sides to the power of the reciprocal of the fractional exponent, which is 2 thirds in this case. So when I type this into my calculator, I get 81. Because the fractional exponent had an even number in it, the 2, I have to do absolute value, make two different equations. So I get 4x plus 7 equals 81. And 4x plus 17, or sorry, I said 7, I meant 17. And 4x plus 17 equals negative 81. I can solve both these equations by subtracting the 17 and dividing by 4. I get one of my solutions to be 16, when, which when I check it back in here works out. It's a solution. And then here, when I subtract 17 and divide by 4, I get negative 24.5. When I plug it back in for x, it gives me that it does not work. It's an extraneous solution. So... That's it. I hope that this helped.